Just recently I decided to redo my daughter's early medieval impression or costume as you perhaps you might call it. So we did a, uh, a long sleeve dress in a previous video. Today we're looking at the apron dress, iconic for the early medieval period and quintessential, some would say, for the Viking reenactor. So how do we go about making an easy apron dress? That's all coming up. Alrighty guys, first thing we got to look at here is a little bit of history. So these apron dresses we know became iconic really in around about the sort of 7th or so, maybe the 8th century and they lasted right through to the 10 hundreds or the 11th century. We know however that their popularity diminished in the 9th century, so towards um, in the 10th century at the latest really in most of Western Europe because the grey finds just don't show them anymore. What are we looking for? We're looking at these tortoiseshell brooches that are very iconic for women of the period. We also find uh, however um, that this sort of dress remained popular in Scandinavia right until sort of the early 10 hundreds and then again it, it just seems to lose popularity now that could be just simply to do with changes of fashion it could also be to do with um, religious influences and all of those sorts of things anyway guys um, there's four measurements that we need to make one of these dresses one is the circumference around the upper chest two is the circumference around the hemline three is the length of the dress or height and the last measurement is this height to the around about here all right with those details we'll start to make a pattern Alrighty, guys so today we're making an apron dress quintessential for the modern day viking reenactor however it's really important to understand that um, if you're looking at historically accurate these dresses had lost their popularity uh, in the 10th century so really by the mid 900s they seem to have gone out of fashion in the um modern day places like uh, England, France, Germany, Scotland, Wales and so on and by the kind of late 900s they'd lost their popularity early 10 hundreds in modern day sort of Scandinavia so uh, it, it does depend on the type of group and what you're trying to achieve but that's just something to bear in mind okay we need essentially two pattern pieces and they are going to look like this and you need to forgive my drawing here. Uh, I am not an artist, but there we go. All right. So now we need four measurements. And this measurement is essentially, um, I would go a little bit under the armpits down to there about to the top of the pelvis and maybe a little bit less than that you're going to need to know how much do you want the dress to flare um, you need to know your waist measurement and you also need to know the bust okay critical measurements all right now so this measurement here is one third of the bust right so we need two of these and we need two of these so if that's one third and the second one is one third then this is one sixth okay now the same goes really with the the waist 
and that's pretty much really the, the, the dimensions you need to know. Um, it's, it's all very, very simple. It all comes together really well. The only other thing that I would add onto this is the shoulder straps are quite narrow and they tend to loop around like so. They tend to be quite narrow shoulder straps. We'll talk about those a little bit later, but basically this is your pattern piece. It's very, very simple and it should only take a couple of hours to make. Okay, let's talk fabrics. Typically speaking, we're talking, uh, I would argue most of the time, wool and maybe not so often linen. Uh, colors, we would really be talking about um, yellows, blues. Uh, yellows can be achieved from dyeing with marigold, blues from a plant called woad. Uh, there's, a there's a range of browns and beige, which can be achieved, you know, really just through very basic dyeing processes. Um, higher status individuals might be able to get something like red, uh, deeper greens, or uh, more consistent blues. I say more consistent because um, the use of the plant woad is a bit difficult uh, and woad really has to be cultivated properly so you need to actually have some, uh, some skill to use that to really get a reliable batch of woad so to speak. Um, and then very high status people would be looking at pinks and purples which can be achieved through lichens and some of those other kind of things, but they're much harder to get and therefore um, fabric would again be a very expensive commodity. So this would really be for the sort of earldom type level or um, people in, in high society. Right, I think we've covered most of it. Um, anything else we'll, we'll get into as we get into the video. Alrighty guys, let's go! This is actually an incredibly easy pattern to make. All you really got to do is put a side piece next to a front piece, next to a side piece, next to the rear piece. First step is just going to be to uh, do a running stitch around all the major joins. And once I've done that, then I'll fill the seams. I've got a spacing of approximately two and a half centimeters for each of my um, my seams. So there we go. Uh, for those of you who are joining the channel for the first time. Uh, welcome, and also um, there's a whole lot of videos around historical garments and garb and, and that kind of thing, so uh, it's definitely worth, I think, subscribing. I keep my stitch length to around about 6mm uh, for something like this. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you. Righty, so we've got a seam here, now just showing you very basically uh, I just gather the seam between my fingers like so and you want to pretty much just very loosely grab the fabric so just trying not to um, take a hectic bite or something. Um, there we go. I like to keep my stitch width approximately. Um, I usually go to four to six millimeters. That is roughly speaking a quarter, a quarter to one sixth of an inch. Depends on 
uh, on what it is exactly that I'm making. Rightio, for the, for the hemline now, what I like to do here is I just simply roll that twice, leaving approximately uh, half an inch, a little bit over, what's that, roughly speaking, 12 millimeters. This side of it, which is going to be an invisible seam, now we're just going to go back and do the same process. We just fell this seam, so it should pretty much be an invisible seam once, um, once that's finished. You're only taking just a tiny little bite um, from the, if you like, on the dress side of it. Um, really just a couple of those those fibers and as long as you're using a, a well matched thread you should be fine okay shoulder straps really really easy now I cut mine quite long and I have a width here of about four centimeters which is an inch and a half what I do is I roll mine in so you have the raw edges in the middle I then fold that once again, so we have now a width of approximately 10 millimeters, which is less than half an inch. Um, and then I will simply do a, a back stitch to put this together. Um, I keep my stitch length for something like this really quite small. but um, it's a really cool kind of end result. And I think the narrower you can get your uh, shoulder straps, so, um, the better. So Alrighty guys, this has come out really, really well. I'm really happy with it. It's, it's really awesome. Uh, I'm so happy with the way it's come out indeed. Uh, you can see that this, is, this works really well. It's a very simple dress to make. You can make one of these in really just an hour or two. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of fabric either. So that all depends upon you and how big you are and all that kind of thing but uh, and how much fabric you need for your pattern but that's okay this is just a simple easy project to make for pretty much anyone all right thank you so much for watching please like subscribe and share and we'll catch you in your next video